up guys and welcome to this week's episode of We Are The Bonsai Supply. I am Jerome and in this week's episode I'm going to be working on my American Elm that has been in training for 35 years. So let's get right to it. Alright so first off I have some great news to share with you guys. This tree, this is my American Elm of course, and it got accepted to be displayed at Disney World for the flower and garden show at the Epcot Park. So it is a huge honor to have your tree displayed there and so this tree is going to be displayed there for three months so i have to make sure that the tree is in its top shape and form and health in order for it to be displayed at epcot so today i'm going to go ahead and push the ramification back a little more so that it can get a twiggier in here versus out here and i'm going to clean up the overall shape a little more and i'm going to repot the tree as well now if you remember i did a video on this tree about a year ago where all the growth was out here and it was not it didn't have any fine twigging at that point so i cut the tree back and i was explaining that i was uh, trying to soften the triangle that it first had so this tree has been grown from a, a little cutting about this size 35 years ago so it's been in training as a bonsai for 35 years so at the beginning when they first started doing bonsai here in the united states uh, they kind of shaped everything into a very strong triangle especially here in florida and that look softened over the years a little bit and so now i'm going to go ahead and soften it even more by not wiring it anymore but doing a, a clip and grow technique for the uh, ramification to have the branches float up a little bit uh, naturally so it's not uh, that you know push down like that so it's a little more uh, soft and, and the branches flow a little more so I want to keep the person alive in the tree by keeping the branch placement as is but I'm, I am going to work on softening the overall look a little bit and make it more natural so also the way that I was able to get this tree so twiggy uh, in, in just a little bit under a year which is actually quite impressive is very simple so once the branches are in place and I defoliated the tree and I pushed all the growth back and I made sure that all the branches are placed correctly. Once the tree grows out again, I was uh, allowing it to grow out until the new growth turns into hard wood, right? Once the, the new growth turns into hard wood, then that was a sign for me that I was able to cut the tree back. So I cut the tree back, I let it grow out again, and I cut it back again, I let it grow out and I cut it back again. Um, kind of like, a, I almost don't want to say it, but it is trimming it back like a hedge, pretty much, like doing a hedge pruning like that. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that word, hedge pruning, but this is literally what it is, and this is how you can achieve such a nice ramification uh, in just under a year, especially here in Florida, since everything grows so fast. So I let it grow out, I cut it back, let it grow out, cut it back, let it grow out, cut it back. And in the meantime, I was fertilizing it, uh, spraying it for insects, and just keeping it very healthy. And now that I have so many branches, I can just easily go in here and just clean up the tree and just clean up the ramification and the tree is going to look incredible once I'm done here. So I also have to repot the tree not just because of Epcot but it's also time because the tree is starting to push itself out of the pot. So when you look at the tree from this level you can see over here how it is like a little mound and over there as well. That means that the tree is pushing itself out of the pot. You can see it here very well how it's Oh, it's just a little as there's a little hill and you can also see here on the edges if you look very closely you can see right here how the tree is starting to push itself out so there's no, no more room for any roots so that's why i have to go ahead and repot this tree let me bring you in and let me show you the branches on how i'm going to push them in and how naturally i'm going to put a lot of movement into the branches out here okay so let's get started i'm going to bring you a little closer all right, so I want you guys to focus on these two branches right here. These are the first two that we're gonna work on. So the last time I worked on this tree, this branch was cut back to here. And then this is all new growth um, in just a few months. And so this growth is fairly straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire these two branches only into position because the rest of the tree looks really great. But these two branches are still a little straight. So I'm gonna help it along a little bit here with wire, but then the rest I'm just gonna do clip and grow. All right, 
right, so working on a uh, ramification is is one of my favorite things because it's just a lot of fun. Um, so I, I always start at the bottom and work my way up. And then I'm gonna stop around here and then start from the other side. So the tree actually tells me already where I need to cut the tree back. So if you look at this branch here, I have a lot of movement, right? And then here, it just goes completely straight. So that tells me that I need to cut this back to about here. You see, now we're creating more movement. So when this tree grows out again, I can then cut it again at a different angle and create the wiggle like that. All right, so I have another example right here. This is a good example. So here the branch starts to fork, right? One goes up and one goes straight out, okay? So what I can do here is I can cut this branch here, right where the last branch grows up. See, and now this branch will start to grow up. Okay, a little closer. This branch will now start to grow up and will create that natural movement. Now this branch here goes very, very sharp up and hits the branch above, right? This branch right here. So what I can do here is just cut it a little lower, like let's say here, and have the branch now flow out. So naturally like that, naturally this way I'm creating a lot of movement in here. So it goes up and instead of it going this far up, I just cut it back and it comes out here. And through that, I can create a lot of movement and really work on the ramification to make it look really, really nice. So the good thing is that once I started uh, removing all the, the top layer of soil, I discovered that there's a lot of roots here that are already growing from the base and that are coming out. So all of these are coming straight out and there's some more over here that are coming straight out. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave these roots, of course. I'm gonna cover them up with soil and then as they start to thicken up, I will start to expose them and then I will start to plant them at the right angle. So you can actually manipulate the roots instead of having them go straight, we can put some movement into the roots. So as these will start to thicken up, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put movement into the roots so that it looks really nice. I also uh, discovered this uh, root base here, which is really strong and powerful. And before the soil was up to here, and now it's gonna be down to here. So there's also a nice root here and also a nice base over here. So slowly uh, but surely I'm working on the base and on its improvement. Also, something that's really important, as you can see, the root ball is extremely thick and really healthy. So the more roots you have down here and the finer these roots are, the finer twigging you get as well. And you can only really achieve this when you use really good bonsai soil. So here we use our all-purpose soil mixture, which is a calcine clay, pumice, lava rock, and pine bark. And you can see the results speak for themselves. Um, check out the soil, the link is gonna be right here, up in the screen. Uh, check it out and try it and let me know what you guys think, but it seems to work really, really well for me, so give it a try. Um, so now I'm gonna pot it into this new pot.
so I repotted it into a bigger pot. Um, it's actually not bigger length or width wise. It is um, just deeper and it is narrower, but it's a thicker pot. Now, the old pot that always bothered me how shallow it was and how thin it was, it just didn't match. This is a big, powerful tree, so it needed a big, powerful pot. It's now fast forward two weeks. Tomorrow, we're driving all out with our trees to Disney World in Orlando, and we're gonna display our trees. So I have to do some finish, finishing touches to make this tree look at its best. So one of the last things I have to do is apply moss on top, okay? So I have my moss tray right over here. This is my moss tree. And all this moss in here has been collected in Georgia. I'm gonna now, use different patches and different colors um, to moss the top here and then it's going to look very natural so when you moss your tree you want to make sure that you don't have all of the same colors okay like you want to have different types of moss and different size patches of moss and and then it looks really cool and really natural So now that I applied the uh, moss, um, I have to make sure that I keep it moist. We mostly just apply the moss when we go to a show, um, and then we would remove it right after again. So, so this tree is now displayed at Disney World at Epcot in Orlando, Florida, in the United States, if you're watching from overseas. Um, and if you happen to stop by and you see our tree, make sure uh, that you tag us if you take a picture. We would love to see you guys there. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me, let me know what you guys think of this video and I'll catch you guys next time.